Hello, folk. This is Mike Ortel, who I reside in the state of Arizona, housed in Phoenix. And um, I'm right now on vacation up in the state of Maine, um, way up in the state. And uh, it's a lovely day. I'm in an old farmhouse looking out the window at cornfields, an old dairy farm. And uh, but I'm talking to you, dear ones, in the state of Minnesota. Was there a few months ago, fell in love with the folk in two different churches. And I want to thank Pastor Sosa for his uh, big heart in this to want to grow uh, his congregations and has a desire along with your whole conference to grow people in the areas of men and women's ministry. So with that little introduction, I'm just going to also let you know I've done uh, men's ministry uh, and my wife has done women's ministry for three different conferences, and we're still doing it in Arizona. She women, I men. Uh, we did it up in Northern New England. We did it down in the Carolinas. So it's kind of in our blood. We have a big burden because, uh, let's face it, we're living in a world where there's lots of controversy. Um, good and evil are at war with each other, and we are in the middle. And the adversary is wanting to destroy Anything to do with women, anything to do with men, with marriage, with family and children. And so anything we as a church can do will be a definite plus and an asset of saving people uh, eternally, but saving homes and families and our churches in this world in which we're living in right now. And, uh, you know, as John 10, 10 says, uh, the adversary has come to rob, kill, and destroy, and he's interested in robbing and killing you folk and your church family and anybody that you're associated with. But God says that Jesus has come that we ha have life and have it more abundantly. Now, that's a promise. God says if he's involved with us and our church, we're going to have an abundant life if we follow him and his principles of how it all happens. So my suggestion is right now, I'm glad to be speaking to women as well as men, that uh, somehow we have forgotten that there are things that we can do in an everyday life and as a, in a church that can give tools to people so that they can walk that straight and narrow. They can enjoy the good things. Most people are not happy people. So men's ministry and women's ministry needs to be a fun ministry. Everything about it should be fun. And when it's fun, you're going to find people from other churches wanting to join whatever the event might be. It might be a, a day seminar or a picnic, or it might be a retreat uh, separate or joined by men and women. But it's got to be fun. It's got to be lively. It's got to be full of energy. Because people like to come to something that's positive, something that makes them feel good. And somehow churches have got a reputation of being boring, uh, being obsolete, uh, not ministering to the day and age in which we're living in. And therefore, I like kind of the emphasis that um, this ministry and this whole Zoom thing is, is talking about. It says we need to reset. I like that. We need to be renewed. Um, let's look at it through different eyes and different ways, because one thing we have got to remember is what worked 10 years ago doesn't necessarily work today. And what worked 50 years ago is really archaic. I, having been now on the senior side of life, being a youth director, I was in the Pathfinders and youth and all kinds of stuff. But in order to keep those things going, it's the same principles as men and women of all ages. We got to have invest joy into whatever we do. Uh, the Bible tells us to uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, which means men's ministry, women's ministry must be joyful. It must be fun. It must be exciting. It must be captivating by going after people. And uh, once you've got them, uh, we got to keep it going. So smiling is very important. 
uh, commending people. I happen to just be uh, getting to the point where I'm going to be going to the printer with a book called The Seven A's of Healthy Relationships. And in there, I'm saying that everything we do has to minister to certain things which will captivate people. And they'll be interested in coming because there's something intriguing about something new and interesting that meets the needs of people. Every person wants to feel accepted. Every person and every cat and dog or animal from a horse to a cow are curious and they want somebody to accept them, to make them feel at home. And our ministry has to be very alluring, as Ellen White says, bringing us in by having something that makes people feel good, that people aren't just listening to a lecture of boring stuff. It may be good stuff, but if you can't put a little bit of fire into it, you know, it's like uh, taking food. We add a little bit of salt. We add a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and it brings taste to it. And men's ministry, it's got to have a lot of flavor. The more flavor, the more people are with you. And so when you folk uh, are out on a, an event, maybe you're going into the community to ministry to people who are hungry. Maybe you're in the uh, nursing home. Or maybe you're back at your own little church when you're doing a meeting. But it's got to have some flavor. It's got to bring some smiles to people's face that they forget that they may be 50 years old and they're thinking they're 20 or they forget that they're 75, but they feel young again because everything about it from the speaker to the music, to the food that you serve. And that's one thing about men's ministry. We don't do anything without food because men love food. And I'm going to go on in a couple of other things. People might think I'm getting a little risque here, but I'm not. If you're a man, man loves to go home because home represents a place they can sleep. They want a home where they can get their good night's sleep. They want a home where there's good food. And believe it or not, they know that there's good sex, too. Now you say, oh, he crossed the line. But I'm just talking real right now. And what appeals to a man is something that appeals to his very nature. Now, we don't in men's ministry always have, talk about the last thing I mentioned, but certainly we spruce it up with all kinds of things that is good food and good folk and good activities, something that they don't go to sleep on, but they have life. So I am suggesting whatever you do, include these things. So I am have always invited whatever the topic or the day or the function might be that it, it's spruced up. And when I say spruced up, that means people's attention is there. They don't, when they go home, they got to tell their neighbor, they got to tell other people in church, they go to work and they're thinking, wow, you won't believe where I just did this past weekend. I went to a retreat just for men. Matter of fact, all different faiths were there because we were just meeting the needs of men. And the speakers that I get and the topics we have are actually um, scratching where people are itching. You can have a topic and it's totally over the heads of people or that doesn't apply to me. But no, you get people in who meet the needs and it's something that a man deals with every day. And uh, I've gotten people, I'm just going on the man's route right now. Um, maybe there's a lot of mental illness or depression among the men. Or maybe men are having problems in uh, other than psychological things uh, where I'd have a psychologist there or a counselor. You may have somebody that is interested in uh, prison ministry. So what I like to get is people who have been in prison, and they come and tell what led up why they ended up going in prison. And believe it or not, we all have the same bodies, and we all have the same temptations. Some appeal to more than others, but these testimonies 
and, and, and anything to do with men's ministry or women's ministry has got to be full of testimonies. That's why AA has been going on decades and decades and decades and decades. And are right now in, in the United States, millions of people are going to these meetings. And they go every day or they go every week. But they go there because it's fun. It's joyful. And men's needs are being met. And there's women there, too. But when I go to them, uh, I'm not an alcoholic. But I love to go to AA because everybody there are feeling loved and wanted and needed. And everybody that go in there, somebody gives them a hug, they give them a high five, and uh, they certainly are enjoying themselves. And then they hear real life stories from real life men who have the same problem they do and found out how they got hooked in. The devil has a thousand ways to hook you in, to lead you away from Christ, to destroy a home. And that's all a part of what is going on in everybody's life. So if you get a person with a enthusiasm and comes and speaks, everything will go very well. So anyways, I'm talking about some generalities here, but every men's ministry, we just do a morning on Sunday morning, we got a phenomenal breakfast. The guys can't wait to eat. And all they can eat. And then they get in groups and they listen to some testimonies. Uh, we make plans to do something later on where we're going to go help put a roof on a house. And on and on and on. So what I am suggesting is that when we do something, make it fun. Number two, meet the needs of people. Put flavor in it, however that might be. And every group and every church group or every this, that, and the other thing. Um, you know, I'm down in Phoenix. Well, they flavor everything to the point where my mouth would be burning up and my I, my stomach would be burning. But to them, that's regular. That's what they want. So you've got to meet the needs of the people who you're ministering to. So anyways, I said a lot of things. But I'm going to lead you with a, a couple of stories. One is Mary Kay, the Kay cosmetic lady, Mary Kay. And she, in her industry, she became a multimillionaire almost overnight, it seemed. And her product was selling. Even though she just passed away recently, uh, the thing is going to go on after her because the philosophy she said why was my industry, my profession, my business so successful? And she gave these words. She says, every person who is a part of my business, whenever I see them, I make them feel important, wanted, valued, and needed. And people all want to have that feeling, a feeling important feeling wanted, valued, needed. And so anything we do, we got to appeal to people in that way. So I am suggesting that as we do anything, flavor it up, flavor it to the point where it meets those needs. There is another person here in Maine when I was here a number of years ago, there is a Red Lobster restaurant that's far more successful than any of them in all of New England, from what I've been told. And this lady, what she does is interesting. The owner of the, of the place is a female. And she takes all her employees to Florida for one or two weeks every winter. When it's below zero up in Maine, they go to sunny Florida. She pays all their way, and, and ha they have a great time. Because they know that our boss has invested in us enough because we are doing service to our community. We're not in for the dollar. We're in for making people happy. And anything that you do for men and women's ministry has got to have a lot of zip and zing 
a lot of enthusiasm, but meet the needs of the people coming. The people will come back and they'll come back and they're going to bring other people back and things will go well. Ella White talks about in her volume nine of the testimony, 189, she says, if we would but humble ourselves, become kind and courteous and tender hearted and pitiful. In other words, have a heart for people that you're, you're meeting. There will be a hundred conversions to the truth where there is now only one. How often we become cocky, we don't become really real, and we as leaders have got to just let everybody know I'm just as human as you are, and it's real. So we're kind to people. We're humble ourselves, and we just are courteous with people. And all of a sudden, your women's ministry, your men's ministry is going to start to grow and grow and grow. And neighboring churches will find out. And, and, and that doesn't mean that you've got to be so inclusive that uh, you can't tell the local Baptist pastor, why don't you come and show, we'll show you what we're doing for our men's ministry. In other words, the more open you are, rather than saying we're the remnant, we don't want anybody to contaminate us, is kind of the opposite of the way Jesus ministered. He was open to everybody. And wanted to minister to everybody. And if you got that spirit going, good food, good fun, good fellowship, you can't go wrong. Don't forget those three F's, okay? Good food, good fellowship, and great fun. God bless you. I'm looking forward to answering your questions if you have any when, we, uh, when we're talking to you on Zoom on, the, on this date of which we're all going to get together. So God bless you. I'm going to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, you have called these people to watch this, to be here, to be super leaders in their church and in their community to help ladies and children and families and men and boys and girls to be like Jesus. Lord, there's very few homes that are happy anymore. But Lord, with Jesus, we're going to have life. We're going to have it more abundantly because you promised it, Lord. And we're accepting that promise right now, asking for that miracle in us that we can pass on to other people, which is God's grace and love. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.